everyone. It's great to see you. Today we are going to be planting up the front urns by our entryway and I always love doing this. It is just such a wonderful way to add impact and color to the front of the house. So first of all, let me tell you what happened to these urns in the last, oh, four or so months. At the end of the season last year, we started noticing that the urns were just waterlogged and I couldn't really figure out what was going on. By the time we took everything out for the winter, we realized that there's one drainage hole at the bottom that goes down and then out to the side. And we realized that the roots from our plants had grown into that and it was just completely obstructed. So we decided to do the reasonable thing and wait till spring to really worry about it. So this spring, they were just, these urns were just filled with water every time it rained. They weigh a ton, oh my goodness. So we had some help and we were able to move them over to the grass, tip them on their side, and we got the roots out that were obstructing the drainage. So now, of course, we don't want this to happen again. And I don't know if any of you have had trouble with this, with the large cement urns that you have. Please, you know, send me a comment and let me know how you solve this problem. This is what we're trying and we'll see if it works or not this year. So the first thing I did is I put a landscape fabric in the bottom here. You can see some of it peeking up over the top. And then I'm also going to try our bag in the pot in the pot method here. So this nursery pot is nestled in. There is space underneath it so that the drainage can still be reached. And then I put new potting soil around it. Now you're gonna notice there's a lot of these floating around our yard right now. We have river birch trees which are wonderful. I love them except for about a week and a half in the spring where they drop all these catkins, which are their seeds in here everywhere. It looks like we have tumbleweed blowing around the yard at the moment, but they'll just sort of disintegrate in here. That's okay. We're not even going to worry about them. So I have my nursery pot in here and I love growing mandevilla in the center. I think that's the type of root that clogs the drainage hole. So this year we're going to put our mandevilla in a bag in the nursery pot in the large urn. I'm going to begin by nestling my growing bag in here. That will give it the stability that it needs as I fill it with the plant and the dirt and I tuck my handles in. Now, I have these beautiful mandevilla. These are raspberry kiss. Oh, it's attacking me. I love these. The color is not quite red. It still has a little bit of pink in it, but it is bright and dynamic. Now, mandevilla do not like to be disturbed. So usually when you unroot a plant, you kind of fluff up the roots and you get it settled in the new pot. Mandevilla don't like that. In fact, if you disturb them too much, they're finicky enough that their leaves just might turn yellow and all drop off on you. Which, if that happens, don't panic. They will come back. But I'm gonna try not to disturb this one too much. I'm gonna get it in the bag and then add some more potting soil around the edge, potting mix around the edge if needed. Okay, so actually it comes up to a good level. I'm going to put a little of the potting mix around now. It just needs a little bit more in the back. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good. Dan, give me the thumbs up if we're straight. I think we might need a little more dirt over here. How does that look? <laughs> okay, thank you. It's good to have your camera crew able to give you feedback. Um, so now you notice that this is sticking up a little bit. All the things that I'm now going to plant around the outside are going to grow up and cover this. So I'm not worried. In fact, I'm kind of happy that it looks this way because the mandevilla doesn't like to sit in water and get too moist. 
I tend to water it maybe every other day, let it dry out a bit. It's really a sun lover. I'm going to be putting petunias and potato vine around here that like it a little bit more moist. So by having this separation, I can keep my mandevilla happy the way it likes it, and I can keep my petunias and the potato vine the way they like it. So let me tell you what I have here. Yes, I am going with the tried and true for this particular urn. I love potato vine. I love the bright chartreuse green. It does fabulous. It'll spill over the edge. And this particular type is the Proven Winners Margarita. I find this to be the most vigorous kind. And for this large of an urn, it works really well. I'm also going to use the Proven Winners Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, which I'm sure you have all heard of from many, many other YouTube channels. And what can you say? You keep coming back to this one because it grows so, so well. And it will keep up with the sweet potato vine, spill over the edge, and look beautiful. Now, the only thing is the bunnies do like both of these particular plants. So I will have to keep an eye on how the bunnies are treating them. Sometimes I come out and they're nibbled up a bit, but so far it hasn't been a big problem. And usually they don't find them right away because this is high up enough and it's not out in the middle of the grass. So I'm gonna get planting here. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to add the biotone. So, of course, none of these are sponsors. Oh, this is a big bag of biotone. Biotone is great for anything that you are newly planting. Usually I put it at the bottom of the holes as I plant. This year I'm gonna put it around the top because I've been reading more about fertilizing your plants. And really, as things get watered in, it sinks down into the root system. So rather than putting it down here and having the plant up here, and it takes a while for the roots to grow down to get to that good food, if I have it on top, it's going to get to the root systems faster. I don't know if it's really going to make a, a difference, but we're going to give it a try. Oh my goodness, as I walk in, it looks so pretty already and nothing's even planted. I got some more plants. We are good. Okay, so I'm gonna do four of each in this container and that seems like a lot but i like it to look full right away later in the season when i tell you it got to be too crowded i will look back at this video and go i know why the proven winners plants here have really nice root systems here they will start to fill in really quickly now that they'll have a home I'm really fortunate there is a little nursery nearby that carries a lot of proven winners. And it just gives me a great selection and I'm so thankful that it's just around the corner so that tomorrow when I realize I want other ones, I can go back again. When I plant these, I try to tip them to the side so that they're sort of going to start cascading over the edge quickly. You don't have to do that because the size of these plants will be big enough that they're going to be looking for additional growth space anyway. Oh, this looks so beautiful. Okay, let me step back and see if I like it. Okay, it's looking good. Give it a week or so and these will have filled in completely, but already we're hiding the pot pretty well here. Now they need a really good drink. They're pretty dry. So I'll do that in just a minute, but right now I'm gonna switch to the other side and do the same thing for the other urn. Here is our next mandevilla. And just like on the other side, I'm going to put in the bag first. Almost forgot that. This one I was storing some of my extra dirt in, so I'm gonna dump that out. We're ready to fill in the sides as needed.
Okay, I think we're just about done here. So I love how these look and I'm so excited even more about how they are going to look because these are just going to cascade over and be these beautiful urns full of flowers that I can enjoy all the way into the fall. And that's the wonderful thing about your mandevillas, your petunias, your sweet potato vine. You are guaranteed for that long lasting color, which is fabulous. Now I will keep watering them and the petunias and sweet potato vine in particular will want to be fed probably weekly. For me it's going to be every other week and I'll be doing well to make sure that they keep producing lots of flowers, lots of foliage. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.